Hello everybody, welcome back, Omega Given here. Today we're gonna to be doing a follow-up video to my last video, which is um, why a Township Tale econ like, economy is doomed to fail. Um, this video is actually gonna be focused on the developer's response to that video, because I was actually editing my follow-up video and then realized that, oh, this response, I'm gonna probably have to make a full video in itself because time was like, you know, going way beyond and I don't think you guys wanna hear an hour long lecture. So let's break down the developer's response. Joel, he uh, kind responded to us giving a little bit insight what they were thinking when they were developing the economy of a township tale and maybe just talk about some of our insights on it and maybe give some of the points back like I think this is great that we're hearing from the developers and it shows that the developers do care about the game guys so remember the developers are hearing us <laughs> we don't think that they're not hearing us they, they do respond but before we go on um, I just want to remind you guys that it really helps for you guys to uh, click that confetti button down below the uh, like button yeah the confetti button uh, it's a, it really helps out the channel especially the viewership of the channel trying to get our channel to grow and you know get more light to a township tale because that's really what i want to do because we love a township tale and grow it and if you want to do something more just subscribe to us and that'll help too um but yeah let's get back into it and actually read this response this is joel the lead programmer's response to my video which thank you joel for responding i love hearing it from the developers and what your guys' ideas and where you're going because i do think that developers when you develop something you really do want to think it through and build a system that works really well so i don't want to degrade on everything like oh this is awful things do work and sometimes there's just things that just need to be improved here and there and this is great so we can hear a little bit what Joel's response is interesting take although I do think economies are difficult to drive currently as the income of coins outweighs the consumption of coins ie inflation is too rapid we do look at various economies throughout history which had economies driven by the people rather than a central bank so we're gonna have to start thinking about the economics in the sense that we are not talking about centralized banking systems we have to talk about community and people driven systems um which you know that changes a lot of things how we think about it we really need to think about it on that level um so i did talk about banknotes and stuff like that in my previous video and how it doesn't work and yes that is true it doesn't work and that's why the team did not decide to go for a central banking system we are going for a different type a uncentralized banking system so joel goes on to say fun fact did you know both salt and stones have been de facto currencies in some culture it's kind of funny that he actually mentions that i actually do remember um, a whole lesson and everything about how in a southern pacific culture there was literally huge ton like two ton three ton ten ton stones that those were actually like the value of their culture where somebody would claim portion of that stone and you would literally trade the ownership of that stone to another person that's actually how they traded and that's how they determined a currency and so it's kind of interesting like what you put value to and like how that culture put value to those stones which you know maybe that the whole culture of that stone was maybe because of religious benefits so maybe like it might have done something that's just my assumptions i don't exactly know how they determined the value of that stone as being valuable culture that's like an example of a culture that put value to a stone like a gigantic you know mini ton stone instead of maybe something smaller like maybe cloth or i don't know like like pebbles <laughs> you know it, it changes throughout like different cultures so with that being said we could actually put value to gold coins in that way that we just think of them as a symbol of something and like maybe there's like a you know within our culture of a township tale we could just think oh well gold coins is a symbol of power and you know the more gold coins you have the more power you have of course that's all theoretical and that's all like very you know image based it's not really a, a solid value to work which I, I like those kind of systems but that's just my personal opinion um is, but we just are trying to pinpoint a value in the economy with that said though let's move on to his next thing my theory is as long as generating money i.e mining gold takes fairly consistent amount of work then the equivalent amount of time spent in different activities i.e for example of wood cutting creates a fairly equal value in a young economy assuming there's demand I could make gold or I could get wood, I could do both. But that involves more travel and tools. So effectively is less value for time. It'd be more economical for me to focus on one thing you focus on another and to trade. So this is kind of like covering the topic of like specialization, how sometimes it's best to economically just go for one thing and get a lot of that one thing and then somebody goes for a lot of the other thing and then you can trade with each other. Um, so this is kind of actually how the economy is kind of built right now. Like a lot of people might not like going to the mines because it's scary or it's, you know, it's a little bit hard to do because you have to have fire and like being able to go about there and being skillful enough to dodge mobs. But so they go and mine and somebody else actually has the skill to do that. So you kind of like trade off a little bit. And then he goes on to say, coins are trying to make this central currency a generic thing. 
to abstract away value and help unify views on things. I.e. without coins, you might have wanted to measure everything in sticks, while I might have wanted to measure everything in flints. Another side benefit was the infinite storage of ATMs, which no other items have. So going off of this, it kind of seems like he's trying to go on the idea that since gold coins can be stored infinitely, um, that's where it kind of has the value because you don't want to be hauling around a bag full of stones. You want to be holding like, you know, something that basically can hold as much as you want of to be able to trade because then you can actually have a source that you can trade from that you can, you know, accumulate in an infinite amount, which that does make sense, but it still doesn't put a value, like a hardcore value on the coins unless you just consider the effort it takes to make the coin. But I, it's kind of hard because like I'm just trying to go off the idea of like, is there a gold standard in, in the economy? But you can't say there's a gold standard because then somebody has to think, oh, well, gold is the money source. But what if, they, what if the economy bends in a way that the gold isn't actually valuable? Which I guess that's where my opinion is, where the gold in this game is really not that valuable because it doesn't have that much of a use. Like you can make some cool looking metal, but it's not the best metal. So that's where it kind of like runs into a fault for me, but you know, I'll, I'll go with it. Like maybe we do have to establish the coins as an image for this economy to work. So we'll have to figure this out a little. We'll have to do a deep dive in our next video, but let's go on. I totally agree that gold coins need to have more intrinsic value though. More things that are built into the game to help drive and kick off that desire amongst community members. I'd love to know what sinks you'd like to see for coins in the game, i.e. things that take coins out of the economy rather than just passing hands. I do like it that he kind of hints that there could be you know, more ways in added into the game to help sink the coins. Uh, value or you know inflation value because currently in many servers oftentimes there's like maybe the miners of that server and those miners are like filthy rich because they accumulate so many coins because they're just selling their you know their mining material and they just basically don't have to buy anything because they have all the, all the things they ever need so then they just you know super rich and then if there's an admin shop then they can buy all the god tier weapons and whatnot from the admin shop and everybody else has to struggle but with that said it's kind of interesting that he does think that maybe we could add some more sinks and maybe that's on us to you know figure out a good way to add a sink to the you know the inflation of gold so that we can make the economy more well-rounded um in many games this is often through like maybe free to play cosmetics so you can technically buy those cosmetics for coins but it's kind of hard to incorporate those kind of ideas into a township tale when cosmetics are a external thing it's on the server or your account side i mean and it's not really on the you know in-game server side but maybe just maybe we could set up some kind of like system where it does sink your coins in a better way somebody commented on my last video actually talking about how there was going to be a housing update at one point which was kind of scrapped when the whole or not scrapped but put on pause while the whole oculus um version was coming out and that maybe in order to own a house you actually have to use coins to lay claim to that house like kind of like how the uh the trade stalls work so you kind of use coins as that and that actually does give coins a solid value because if you value that house which could be an end game kind of item or feature then that actually determines oh well coins are worth this much meaning how much item do you sell to get coins to hold a house or a property real estate so that does add quite a bit of value so maybe the housing update that you know if it does eventually come that could help fix the value to gold coins and also sink the gold coins because those item those coins in the market stalls those do get flushed out of the economy meaning it does deflate the value of coin and we need more like things like that to deflate the value of coins so maybe coins are placeholders for time owned items or features in the game so right now we have just the market stall so that has the that's the only place really where coins are of value is the market stall which you know that is kind of like you have to determine how long do you want this item in the market for you know a coin to be you know used up and then it's gone gone so i'll kind of just leave that question up to you guys the viewers to maybe think of more ideas of how we can sink the value of that or sink the inflation value of coin as well as maybe adding more reason to value a coin 
Somebody did comment um, on my last video that I think most servers, um, I think they said all, but we'll just narrow it down because it's not all servers, but most servers use Valiant as 30 to 60 coins per bar. And I have to disagree with that metric. Um, when you think about the time it takes to get 30 to 60 coins per Mithrail or even Valiant, it is much harder to get Mithrail. And uh, there's slight fallacy in that um comment in the fact that those servers are admin driven meaning that it's not uh vanilla uh the township tail if it was a vanilla township tail on a macro scale it would be much more expensive to buy mithrail but those servers are deflating it because admins are spawning it in and setting the price so that's a fixed economy and that is actually based on a central market when the vanilla game is not based on a central market um, the central market being the admins are the owners of it and they are the governor of that server. So I'm, I'm gonna just, you know, put that to the side because some people misunderstand what I'm talking about. I'm talking about vanilla and not actually like servers that develop their own economies based on admin privileges. That's a complete different topic. So, and that's, you know, that's a community topic. That's really meant for your own servers. That's not meant for the vanilla idea of things. So with that aside, let's kind of just try to think about, you know, tying these actual values to end game items the games that are very desired which is mithrail or valium those two pieces those two valuable pieces is like what we can compare a lot of our efforts to because i don't like to give give away my mithrail when it's worth so much so people don't get mithrail and it just doesn't get into the economy and it's kind of like how in minecraft you do have like diamond and iron well to the basic player, diamond is worth a lot because you can get diamond armor and diamond tools. But guess what? Iron to the redstone player is worth 10 times more than diamond because iron can be used to make so many more things than diamond. So whenever I play Minecraft, I actually value iron much more than diamond, even though like the, the quantities of value is a lot different. Like I still think that yes, diamond is harder to get. So I will value more iron to diamond, but I will use more iron. So I'm flushing more iron through the market of Minecraft. But that's like a whole side topic. We need to relate that back to uh, Township Tail, but we're gonna probably leave that more for our next video where I really try to break down the value of items and in my opinion of course to, of like you know what's worth what and like by basically time spent to mine like how much time it spends to mine and obtain those items we'll, we'll flush that in the next uh, video so stay tuned for that it might take me a bit because you know that's a lot of calculations to figure out I'm gonna have to probably make a whole Excel chart of time to value kind of things and it'll take a while but if you guys like this video please give it a like a subscribe thank you developers for responding um especially joel like he's actually the one that responded we love your game keep it up and you guys keep a uh, keep on playing because we love a township tale and we will see you all next time